Hey there Mini Wargamers, it's Paul here from Mini Wargaming, uh, here to show off. It's a bit of a conversion project uh, working on and we're going to go to the other room and show you some close-ups of the Skull Hammer. Uh, some of you members may know of it already. Uh, there's a couple of videos I did for that, but uh, we're going to give you a bit of a close-up of the finished product and I'll walk you through some of the things I did. Okay, so here's my latest project. Uh, any of you Apocalypse players will be aware of the Skullhammer data sheet that's available there. and It's obviously listed as a conversion project from the Baneblade. I started out with a uh, Storm Sword Shadow Sword kit, so it doesn't have the same turret arrangement as the Baneblade, but I thought that would be suitable because it uh, counts as open top for orcs and it counts uh, 30 boys can pile into it. I guess what I'll do is I'll first I'll talk about what, the, um, what conversions I did. So uh, starting on this side, uh, the obvious one, I, I cut out this panel here using uh, just a, a razor saw. Um, came out pretty easy. There's already the panel lines. Try to follow those, and then I scored the back of that and was able to pop that off. I uh, cut out one of the wheels here and put in one of the old uh, <clears throat> artillery weapon uh, wheels there I had from my bits box. Also along here, we got some uh, spiky bits from the Stompa kit. Another one here. Uh, these ones here are tank trap bits from the city's kit, whatever it is. Still have the heavy bolters on here. I want to change those out for some big shooters, uh, but I didn't have time. It was a bit rushed with this. And uh, so for now, it's just heavy bolters of the calendar with big shooters. But eventually, I want to chop the front off those, put some magnets on, and big shooters, and be able to swap them out for rocket, twin link rockets as well. That's the options on the, the data sheet. Going around here, uh, that's the uh, that's a headlight from the, the Stompa kit as well, actually. I had to trim this little piece back here to make it fit better. It's got some little kinks taken out of it. Uh, that's the turret, the Sponson that was uh, that came with the kit. These uh, checkered plate pattern uh, bits here, there's a couple of them around the main blade. Those are from uh, Pegasus uh, terrain kits, and so I just cut those down to size and bent it over that one. Ended up breaking, but whatever, it's not a big deal. And it's got some glyphs from the uh, Stompa kit and from the truck and battle wagon kits, uh, sort of all around. There's a, another one there. This is a little platform from the Stompa kit. And obviously a lot of the grot riggers from the Stompa kit. You got the guy here riding the, the cannon and the guy here giving a finger of some sort and another grot hanging up here. Again, more glyphs from the Stompa kit. Looking at the front of this now, we've got uh, this big sort of skull thing here. Uh, that was just plastic card I cut up, and I have some sort of detail added there. That's just uh, I beams. That, uh, from, again, plastic uh, bits that you can get from uh, your local hobby shop. Really handy. They come in scale, different scales and different sizes. The rivets here; those are just uh, plastic rod, cut really, really tiny, and glued on there. Teeth, just plastic card, and again with that I-beam across the front and some rivets put on there, again with the same technique, cutting off with a plastic rod. Um, add some little spiky bits here, plastic card again. Uh, the grot drivers from the battle wagon kit. This big wire here, or it is a big wire, it's just some sort of tubing that I painted up. Drilled holes in the side and plugged it in there. The exhaust pipes here, because this is a fast orc vehicle, I wanted to make it look orkier. Here again, just plastic tubing, you can get that at a local hobby shop. The different uh, diameters, this one here obviously fits inside the other one. Um, some support pieces for my bits box. In order to get these bends, all I did was I, I cut the tubing with a, my razor saw on an angle and then twisted it and glued it back together again. So I did that in a number of spots and you're able to get nice big corners on it. This is a just an exhaust from a battle wagon kit and uh, some more of the tubes, extra holes drilled in it. Nothing, uh, nothing too special there. Again, just you cut on a slight angle, you twist it, glue it back together, and you get some nice curvy bits. Uh, on the back here, just more tubing. Um, these are just the drums from this uh, fuel tanks from this kit that came with it. Just put them in a different spot to kind of cover up some of the imperial looking things. This here, again, plastic I beams from the railroad supply shop. Just did that to put like a banner pole so it looked kind of like the one that's in the uh, on the data sheet in the Apocalypse book. <clears throat> uh, see over to this side here, again this is just some rearranging of uh, the bits that came in the kit, some plastic tubing, stompa pieces, checkered plate, plastic card, 
another piece cut out and an I-beam put across there just to make it look like it was patched by some orcs. Plastic card with the rivets again, same up here. More glyphs, you know, grot rigger there, drilling away at something, not making any sense. This part here is obviously from the, uh, the battle wagon kit. It comes off and uh, I've made this just so I can swap things out, maybe use, use it for another battle wagon that I have. Um, so again, basically, uh, actually that's exactly from the battle wagon. This is the uh, commander from the battle wagon with one of the arms, I think, from the Stompa kit. Just drilled out the end there with a 1 16th inch drill bit, my pin vise. This here is a telescope. I believe it's from the uh, one of the Warhammer scenery bits. Again, I got that doing the scenery building thing at Games Day. Ended up with a lot of cool little bits that didn't know what I was going to do with them, but now ended up with a use for it. So I figured that would be a spotting telescope or something random like that. So this is, and this piece here is from the battle wagon kit as well. It's the grab a claw support. I just trimmed this down so it would fit right into that notch and look like it was made for it. Um, again here, uh, with all my battle wagons, I've done the same thing. I've magnetized this front piece. It's got two small magnets there in it, and this comes right out as well. So all of my guns are interchangeable on all my battle wagons, and I made sure I lined up all of the magnets with all my battle wagons as well, just to make sure if I got them mixed up, if I wanted to swap them out for whatever reason, I would be able to. So that's the the turret with the uh, the cannon on it. Another option that the Skullhammer has is for a, a lava. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do that because the only models for the lava are much much smaller. So maybe I'll what I might do is if I ever wanted to do that, maybe make an insert for this here at a smaller circle. It's the battle wagon upgrade sprue that's. Uh, now available from Games Workshop fits into this size hole here, so maybe I'll make an insert to, to bring that this hole down to that size. Again, this is the battle wagon uh, support structure for this. I just uh, had to do a little bit of trimming to make it fit. Look closely in here, I had to trim around there. Probably should have filled those gaps, but you would notice unless I pointed out like I just did. Uh, the main cannon here, it's basically the, the kit cannon. One of the options in the kit, um, there's the main section part here, uh, another part from the kit, and then right inside here is where it ends, and it's just a piece of brass tubing that I had in my bits box. I drilled some extra holes for venting, and uh, again, more plastic tube for my, uh, my collection to be sort of a, some sort of a orky cannon. Make it look kind of random, not imperial looking. And this again is just my, more of my plastic tubing cut on angles, rotated to get the 90 degrees. I don't know what that's supposed to be, but add some more detail and just a slightly larger tube that fit over top of the other one. I think that's most of the details. Oh, some, uh, I changed out that one there. It's hard to notice, but I notice it, I guess. This front uh, sprocket is from a 135th scale tank. So I just swapped it out. Again, my bits box, always handy to have lots of old kits laying around. Um, there's actually another one in here, uh, so those both are from a 135th scale tank. Had to trim them a little bit, fit them in. I thought they'd be more noticeable than they were, but they're not. So, a lot of time, <laughs> something that's not really noticeable, that's okay though. Extra detail that I see. I guess the other major thing in terms of uh, conversion, so we got like the, the spiky bits, we got the plates um, to make it look sort of patched up in Orca, you got all these. The, the Stompa kit's great, it comes with lots of extra pieces, lots of glyph plates that I don't plan on using on my Stompa, but still will have plenty to make it look unique. The only other major thing that I did was this, uh, this dirt here on the, on the tracks. I, I outlined that, I think, in one of my previous articles, but uh, what it is is it's an acrylic medium with resin sand in it, made by Liquitex, the one I have. I got it uh, at a local art store comes in a, a tub, not that expensive, and works great for smearing on here. It clear, dries into sort of a white, clear color. What it allows you to do is it allows you to get lots of mud in there. You don't have to worry about it flaking off. It hardens up nicely, and it's really easy to paint. So I smear that on with a, a popsicle stick. I tried to smear it on in the lower areas where I thought mud might build up, cover up any uh, imperfections of stuff I did when I built it. I also put some underneath here, sort of where I thought it might collect as this thing was driving along. 
and just adds a bit of orky character saying you know this thing has been been around the block a couple times and uh, they don't really clean it up much so I think that wraps it up make sure you tell them Matt and Dave how much you enjoy this and so that way we do more of these projects talk to you later